These lands are the remotest parts of western Mongolia. The snow-capped peaks of the Altaikhanga mountains can be seen imposingly coming through the mist. Amid this breathtaking landscape, the wonders that Mother Nature can offer are still untamed and truly wild. In the far distance beneath the gloomy sky and hidden under thick clouds and fog lies our destination. It is a snowing lightly when we arrive at the base of the mountain. Our first task is to set up our cameras at the designated spots. With this task accomplished, we hope that tomorrow miracles may happen. The winter weather in the remotest mountain region of western Mongolia is particularly cold and harsh. Today it is relatively milder in the valley, but it is snowing high up. The snow will surely continue until midnight, which will ease our efforts in finding new traces of wild animal tomorrow. As expected, we clearly see new traces of wildlife on the fresh snow from last night. We see a spotted animal moving behind a rock. This is our protagonist. The snow leopard is lying down calmly, vigilantly observing its surroundings in the morning sun. Taking in the awe-inspiring view, afforded always to the queen of the mountain. This snow leopard is an adult female. Watching and studying the notoriously elusive animal which inhabits in steep rocky cliffs and slopes of the high mountains is not an easy task. Some progress, however, has been made toward deeply studying this elusive animal thanks to automatic camera traps used within its habitats and distribution ranges. The snow leopard looks most spectacular during the peak of winter as its fur becomes thick and woolly. She is not here by chance, but rather because this is her home. Snow leopards are territorial animals and communicate with one another through its markings, scrapes in the ground, scratches on trees and rocks and scent marking in specific locations. Scrapes are the most common where snow leopards push loose earth with their hind feet. These can often be found at the bases of rocks or cliffs as well as near specific boulders on mountain tops and slopes. Sometimes the snow leopards spray urine and leave droppings over the scrapes. Another popular way of marking their territory for this predator is scratching. Mostly they scratch tree trunks and sometimes they scratch rocks leaving behind their claw marks. Scratches on rocks show how sharp and strong their claws are. What is interesting is their scratches are often found on lone, isolated trees. The camera traps reveal the snow leopards furiously scratching after leaving scrapes at the bases of trees. It is a very curious animal. She seems to have spotted the camera. She is surprised, perhaps thinking, what is this strange thing? 
but she soon disappears into the snow. The intrigue of the camera is short-lived. Snow leopards spray their scent to mark their territories, as well as to find each other during mating season. Mostly, they spread their scents on shaded rock sides, sheltered from sunlight and wind. Even as they hunt during the night time, they leave scent marks. If we look at much closer, the scents are a white, sticky, thick agent which keep their odour for long periods of time, like perfume. The most curious question about snow leopards is how big is the population on this mountain or in the country? The snow leopard population of a mountain depends on many factors. Essentially, the populations of this powerful carnivore are interrelated with sources of its prey species within their ranges. A key prey species for snow leopards is Siberian ibex here in Mongolia. Every year, an individual snow leopard hunts an average of 16 ibexes. They catch and feed on rodents and birds too. The fact snow leopards can catch all of these species shows how quick and swift they can be. During this trip, we have seen a snow leopard eating a red deer near the forest edge. When stalking its prey, snow leopards don't maul many animals at once, like the wolves are known to do. But as they lose their habitat and their prey species decline, the snow leopards sometimes receive a favor from the ownerless herds of livestock, making use of the prey available, sheep, goats, cows, etc. When they do so, they show no remorse, instead act as lord of the mountains. Look here, the carnivore is eating plants. Now why would they do that? It is reported that carnivores feed on plants and lick salt rocks in order to digest their food faster or eliminate parasites in their intestines. During the mating period, our camera traps showed us something very interesting. Four individuals came into frame one after the other. Three of them spread their scents, whilst the largest individual did not. Instead, he went in a different direction. Presumably, the female leopard he sought had not left her scent in this location. Surprisingly, five days later, the snow leopards all returned at night and spread their scents at the same location. Once they finished, they went back in the direction they came from. As the mating season happens, the snow leopards begin to look for females. Occasionally, snow leopards make unusual sounds especially during the mating season or some other reason. It seems to nomads living here in the mountain that the snow leopard makes sounds similar to a human shouting or a camel grunting. <laughs> Throughout the mating season, Male snow leopards find ways to make the females aware of their presence. Thanks to their intense vocalizations and markings, males are able to find females. Sometimes the males compete and also bear mutual enmity for the females they select. Before copulation, they travel together as a pair for a period of time. When pairing, they do not take much notice of anything around them. When we deliberately whistle to the snow leopards lying and stretching in the light midday sun, they calmly raised themselves up, laid back and slept. 
Intrinsically, the species is not easily disturbed, and so they did not care for our presence throughout the entire day. Snow leopard mating seasons occur slightly differently across the countries where they range. In the Mongol Altai range, the mating season mostly occurs in mid-February. They have now become a couple. When approached, the female becomes angry at its mate, but still stays close without pushing him away. The male is just behind the female, who is running from one steep rock to another. This time the male is approaching the female, but he seems to have made her angry. It is still unknown why the female gets angry when the male approaches. The female is calmly laid out sleeping as the mate is patiently waiting for her to wake up. When filming, we accidentally make a noise. The female rises up and looks seriously toward us. The male seemed to dislike it because we have woken up the female. As we continue to film them, the male patiently sits back down and waits for the female's body gestures. Finally, they begin to copulate. The female has pushed the male away, possibly because she feels pain as the male is biting her neck repeatedly. Once again, the male sits down and waits for a call from the female. The copulated pair has gone over the mountain. They will copulate again and by the end of the mating season, the male will go his own way. How many cubs will be born in a few months' time? We will just have to wait and see. From here on, the female will have the duty of raising her cubs alone. However, she still lies down, staring into the distance, calmly without any worry. Snowfall is lingering. Feeling the cold, a tiny pike is possibly dreaming about the warm, sunny days. Like it, the rest of the wildlife on this mountain seems to have gone silent because of the frosty conditions. There is no sound except for the blowing of the chilly wind. Even though the mountain tops are now covered in snow, the frozen streams are beginning to melt. Spring is coming. The little pike is feeding on newly emerging vegetation. The mountain valley has become lively once again as hibernators come out, and birds are singing and flying everywhere. The female snow leopard that mated last winter must have given birth to her cubs by now. The search for them now begins. Female snow leopards are typically pregnant for about four months and give birth in June. An average litter size is usually two to three cubs and four in a rare cases. We are looking forward to seeing how many cubs our protagonist has had. After searching for some time, we found the female. She is no longer alone, now roaming with her cubs. One, two, three. How blessed the high mountains are. There are four cubs following her. This is a truly rare case. Besides breastfeeding, 
female snow leopards also provide their cubs with prey meat. It shows that the mother's breast still has milk. Even four months has passed since she gave birth. The mother is now leaving the den to hunt. Before leaving, she instructs them not to venture out. However, with unusual sounds coming from the outside, the cubs still wander off with curiosity. It is an adorable sight, the cubs bouncing here and there. One of the cubs is lying in the den in the midday sun, waiting for his mother. The cub cautiously looks at us with his bright grey eyes, but then falls asleep immediately. But he's still curious. He has forgotten his mother's instruction to be inside the den whenever there is a risk of danger and is now trying to play hide and seek with us. The cub might think that he's unseen if his face is hidden. Cubs are usually breastfed for two months and in autumn begin to eat meat. They usually do hunts at night time. Generally, mother also hunt during daytime to feed her cubs. Despite having no specific threats from the rest of the wildlife in their range, Snow leopards face high mortality risks as cubs by falling from steep rocks or mountains, getting lost or being caught by predator birds. Their populations increase rather slowly as females give birth only once every other year. Mum is travelling with her cubs. The cute cub jumping on his mother's back seems to be liking the camera, repeatedly playing with it. The other cubs like to play too. Often cleaning his face and licking his body, this cub seems the cleanest among all. His mother is also caring for her cub by licking him. Meanwhile, another cub is having milk from his mother's breast. The curious cub is approaching the camera again to see if there is something interesting. He enjoys playing around. The cubs follow their mother all day and night playing without becoming exhausted. When travelling through the range to hunt, the mother frequently looks back at her cubs to check whether any of them are left behind or lost. She also teaches them to hunt and find food. The mother snow leopard is scratching the conspicuous roots of a tree. A cub is coming towards his mother, smelling the track through which they had gone through before. The cub is jumping over the tree, but is unable to scratch over it because he's too small. However, this is his first jump over a tree like his mother's. The first winter, the time in which the cubs follow their mother, is now over. Cubs are becoming independent and leaving their mother soon. Generally, snow leopard populations are naturally regulated and kept within their ranges. The mother snow leopard has made great effort in teaching her cubs in how to independently live during the past period. She has raised her cubs to maturity. Shown earlier, this cub, which often cleaned his face and licked his body, is still doing the same. He was the one curious with the camera. The cubs have all grown bigger and stronger, but they still display the same behaviour of playing hide and seek, hugging and licking each other like they did as babies. The sleepy cub 
is napping with his head on his seedling. Much like us, they love, care, and look out for one another. As they grow bigger, they continue following and displaying affection to their mother. But as they mature, they begin to have their independent home ranges, in accordance with the law of nature. The mother is left alone. The population size of the snow leopards is naturally regulated, given that hundreds of them rarely coexist in the same range. It is a smart species who monitors its population size. Therefore, the mother remains in her home range as her offspring leave for their own range. A vast valley is not easy to travel through. A snow leopard is running through an endlessly vast valley. They have only been recorded to habit high mountains. They are primarily solitary and do not share their home ranges. Therefore, this young one needs to travel within vast areas to find his home range. He has been traveling for about 80 km through the Huixin Gobi. A valley between two mountains is called a transition area. To find a home range, snow leopards pass through these wide valleys between mountains. We have observed this behavior on several occasions and documented them. So why is the snow leopard being protected globally? The brief answer is, it is a top predator that plays an important role in maintaining the ecological balance of the high mountains. If these places are not inhabited by snow leopards, the herbivores, including argal sheep and Siberian ibex, may overpopulate and consequently bring along contagious diseases among them and livestock. Moreover, the decline and loss of wildlife movements and migrations may lead to reduced and non-diverse plant communities as well as the disappearance of natural springs. Therefore, mountains with the snow leopards have a healthy living environment and ecological balance. It might be unbelievable, but it makes complete sense. For each new generation, snow leopards have their own home range. Like the rest of the species, our cubs move from place to place to find theirs. These are the remotest lands of Western Mongolia, the splendid Altai and Hangai Mountains, home to the snow leopards. Mm -hmm.